on the heels of the F-117s were the Air Force's F-4G Wild Weasels, which attacked critical Iraqi radar sites with harm anti-radar missiles. The Wild Weasels have one of the most dangerous assignments of the strike force. Its job is basically to soak up the air defense. It goes in first and goes out last. And the, the Wild Weasel missions on this war are four hours plus. Now, that's a long time for a fighter. Normally it's an hour, hour and a half that most guys are flying. So he goes in, he sees when the radar comes up, he goes down there with a, uh, an anti-radiation missile that homes on radar, and he gets those guys to fire at him, uh, or at least to keep the radar on, so he can in turn destroy the, the, the radar-guided AAA, the radar-guided SAMs, uh, radar sites, and the air defense radar sites, uh, whatever it is that's going to be a threat to the strike force coming behind him. The wild weasels were remarkably successful in their mission, suffering no losses in the first wave of the attack. We were, we were shooting the SAMs who were trying to shoot at the guys who were doing what they were doing downtown. The SAM missile sites in town? Around the perimeter of the Around town. Around the perimeter of Baghdad? That's correct. And tell me again about the resistance that you ran into? Lots of, lots of ground fire, lots of AAA, that Santa aircraft artillery. Uh, and like I say, I think there was one SAM fire that I saw, but uh, it was so far away and up through the smoke and haze, it was hard to make it out. So nothing came close to you? No, but that's the beauty of the system. We can stay far enough away that that's not going to be a problem for us, from the SAMs anyway. The bullets are the ones that scare me. Now you're going back after breakfast. we got to go eat breakfast, uh, look at the next mission, and get ready for the next go. The Wild Weasel's mission was not over after the first attack. They have continued to fly missions throughout the campaign to protect the other aircraft. Here, the F-4G Wild Weasels of the 35th Tactical Fighter Wing prepare for another mission over Iraq. The sophisticated harm anti-radar missiles are carefully loaded under the wing of each aircraft taking part in the mission. The air defense suppression phase of the attack proved much more successful than anyone anticipated. Losses among the later waves of attack aircraft were remarkably low due to the effectiveness of the wild weasels and their Navy and Marine counterparts. This success was due to the close attention paid to this difficult mission by both the United States Air Force and Navy as a result of the Vietnam War. The lessons of the air war over Vietnam as well as later air battles in the Mideast in 1973 and 1982, convinced the Air Force to organize a complex force of aircraft to deal with the growing threat of radar-guided anti-aircraft weapons. This consists not only of anti-radar wild weasels, but radar-jamming planes such as the Raven and the Prowler, and specialized stealth aircraft such as the F-117 Blackjack. In spite of their success in weakening the Iraqi defenses, there was no sense of complacency. The wild weasels continued their missions throughout the air defense campaign. 